Hello again and welcome back. By now, if you're using the Paideia web app to learn your Greek, you've just started into the second set of badges. And so it's time for us to begin learning the last of the letters of the Greek alphabet. These are some slippery customers. A, a few of the Greek letters are confusing at first. Some because they look like an English letter that actually makes a different sound. And some because they're easily confused with other Greek letters. Here's the alphabet again. And uh, again, all of the letters we've already learned are highlighted in yellow. And the letters with a green background are the ones that we're going to look at today. The first of these is Zeta. Now, the, the source of confusion here is that the capital Zeta looks like an English Z, uh, but the lower case uh, looks vaguely like a final S, although it's taller in the upper section. The sound, though, is like DZ in ADZI, the woodworking tool, or like the DS in you know, the English words ADS or FADS. Um, it sounds just like our Z in modern Greek, uh, and we're not sure when this changed. Uh, a typing tip, this is usually typed with the Z key, because Z is closest to uh, the sound in English. But remember that even at the beginning of a word, uh, sort of like the letter C, uh, this sounds like a combination of the letters D and Z. Z. The letter new is confusing because the lowercase new looks like an English letter V. But as the uppercase suggests, this letter actually makes an N sound, uh, like in nine or knife, if we remember the silent K. Um, and the lowercase new looks a little bit like a, a tip of a knife blade. So if we remember that the lowercase new looks like a knife, that'll help us to remember that it makes the N sound. Uh, the new is usually typed with the N key. The letter Xi, uh, sometimes spelled Xi and sometimes Ksi, uh, looks in the lowercase like an English E or even a backwards three. And the uppercase might be confused with an uppercase letter theta. But the sound is a combination KS sound, sort of like the X in the English words ax or in Tex-Mex. It never makes a, a Z sound like the X in xylophone. Uh, and to type this letter C, uh, we sometimes, depending on your operating system, type it with the C key and sometimes with the J key. The letter rho is confusing because both in the lowercase and in the uppercase, it looks a lot like the English P. But the sound it makes is an R sound. It was probably originally a, a rolled R like uh, R in, in modern Italian, a R sound. And you can decide whether or not you want to, to trill your R. Um, but this is the only consonant that can take a breathing mark, uh, always a rough breathing, probably representing the fact that it could sometimes be pronounced as a, a more heavily trilled or even guttural R, R or R, as in rema, speech. Uh, but I think the lowercase uh, row uh, with the tail that goes below the line uh, looks a little bit like a, a brand new shoot with a root st uh, sticking down. And so if you remember uh, that it looks a bit like a root, uh, that can help you remember that even though it uh, is similar to P, the letter row actually makes an R sound. Here finally is the medial or uh, uh, middle form of sigma. Uh, now, this is a source of confusion again because uh, when the lowercase sigma is not at the end of the word, it changes its shape. 
Uh, and in the middle of a word here, it looks more like an O with a tail at the top. But actually, if you think about the final sigma, the uh, sigma at the end of a word, and uh, imagine taking the tail of the sigma, the, the lower curve, and flipping it upwards, you end up with something just like uh, this uh, medial sigma. The uppercase sigma, though, doesn't change. It doesn't matter whether it's at the beginning, middle, or end of a word. And the sound doesn't change, whether you're dealing with uh, this medial sigma or the other sigma we saw at the end of a word. The sound is still S, as in snake. And most keyboards use the S key for this form, while the final sigma is usually typed with either the V key or the W key. The letter phi uh, can look like an O, although it has a vertical line through it. Um, it can look like psi, although notice that the circle is closed at the top, where it isn't in psi. And it can look a lot like theta, although in both the lower and upper cases, notice that the line goes vertically through the circle, not horizontally. The sound of phi uh, is like F in fish or finger or like the pH in philosophy. And actually, uh, the pH sound in philosophy originally derives from this letter. It uh, is never, though, the voiced F in of. So just like with theta, uh, which is always th and never the, uh, so with phi, it's always f and never th. Uh, it's usually typed with the F key which makes sense given its sound. The he letter, uh, which uh, uh, is spelt usually C-H-I, but is pronounced with uh, a rough C-H, he, can be very confusing because it looks like an English X. But the sound is like the guttural C-H sound of uh, the German Bach or the, the Scottish word Loch. Um, it's never pronounced ch as in church. Um, some people, especially English speakers, have trouble pronouncing he, uh, the h sound, because it's made back in your throat. And if so, you can pronounce it like a kappa, a k sound. But remember that that's not its proper sound. Its proper sound is a, a rough guttural h sound. So if you can make it, uh, do, and that will help you to remember the spelling of words. This is usually typed with the X key, although some keyboards will uh, uh, type it with the, the C key uh, and switch it around with the uh, Xi. We've now learned the whole Greek alphabet, and you can, again, find a, a, more about the Greek alphabet and pronunciation uh, in Mounce's Basics of Biblical Greek, Chapter 2.